Because we got to talk about sisters, man, because okay. I've been watching this show since the first episode. <laughs> And I think if you remember, as soon as I saw you pop up on the show, I posted it on the gram like, yo, yeah, that's what's yeah. up, man. So talk to me about that and how that whole experience came about. Um, it's, it's funny because I was actually, that April, I had auditioned for Bigger on a BET Plus, which is Will Packer show. And I was come down to me and another dude by the name of Chase to play the role of Dion. And um, Robbie Reed called me in the office and let me know. It flew me out. I was doing a producer session and I thought I got the role. And they says, hey, device, I want to let you know we're going to go with Chase. Mm. Right? And I was like, so then y'all brought me in the office to let me know in person that I, I didn't get the role. And she was just like, no, I really wanted you to know that, you know, you're doing the right thing. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. Just because you didn't get this role doesn't mean that you're not a good actor. It's just this role wasn't for you. So I was heartbroken. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, this is my opportunity to be a series regular on a TV show. Uh, fast forward three weeks, I get a phone call to audition for Sisters. No, I got I get a phone call to audition for The Oval. Okay. And I go in and I, I send in an audition for The Oval. Um, I have a producer session once again with TPS, and then I read for the role of Pinky. And uh, Pinky was supposed to be in, I think, four episodes. Uh, he wasn't a series regular. He was a recurring role, but they booked me for the role of Pinky, and I was excited for it. Came back home. I told wifey, I said, yo, I got it. You know, this is going to be my opportunity to get on TV. And then... Uh, a week later, I get a phone call from Mark Swinton today. Hey, Deval, uh, that's how Mark Swinton talks. He goes, hey, uh, Deval, uh, I got some news for you. We're going to have to pull the role of uh, Pinky for from you. And I was like, damn, I got fired on my day off. Like, what is happening? I, I didn't even get a chance to go to work yet. Yeah. Like, what is really happening in my life? That's two roles that I had. So he started laughing. And he was like, no, actually, we have a better role for you. Uh, it's a role by the, by the name of Zach on the show Sisters. And uh, we haven't announced it yet. There's a show that's going to be on BET as well as Linear. You're going to be a series regular. Uh, you're going to be one of the male leads. And I was like, yo, is this like really happening? Like I went from being a recurring role to a series regular. And um, that's that's how the story actually happened. I had auditioned for a completely different TV show. They pulled that from me and gave me this. Then two weeks later, I get a phone call from Bigger. And they say, yep. hey, uh, we have a role for you on Bigger. It's a guest star playing Ken. So I ended up booking a role on both TV shows. Yes. And it's funny because when you don't get something, you automatically assume like, dang, I, you know, I wasn't good enough. Or no one's looking out for me. And then all I did was keep pushing. And me and Chase became really good friends because after he booked the role of Dion on Bigger, I, I called him. I was like, yo, congratulations. And he was like, yo, people typically don't congratulate you when you beat them out for a role. It's very competitive in that Hollywood space. But I'm like, yo, it, one of us had to get it. And yeah. you were the guy that got it. And I watched his audition and he was actually really good. So I was like, yo, congratulations. We kept in touch. And then I think that positive energy, that karma ended with me, you know, getting a role on Sisters. And then they brought me back for season two of Bigger to Recur. Mm -hmm. So I got six out of 10 episodes on that. So God's been blessing me. So I've just been thankful and excited. Absolutely. Because I, I was going to say, you still wound up getting on Bigger because you had the... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They and brought me back season two for six episodes. So it was a blessing. Ty, you know, Tyler Perry is he's really killing it right now. I feel like every show on BT uh right now, like he's really doing his thing. So how 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 does that work? Because I'm sure it, they you know, they watch the auditions from show to show because all of these things are, are you know somewhat connected because even um I um the the the, the lead on, on, on sisters was also on the episode of Bruh. Um, as, yeah. a, as a lawyer, so the shows are kind of like connected, so they get a chance to actually see you anyway. Well, what happens is, is Tyler, Tyler is involved in all of, he has his hands in all of these things. So they have a casting crew, and this is what's crazy about working at Tyler, Tyler Perry. He, he doesn't just have a show. The man owns a 350 acre studio, you know, and it's the largest studio. It's larger than all of the major studios combined, Paramount, Warner Brothers, um, it's, it's, it's a huge studio and inside the studio, they have a full production office and the casting office cast people and they, they have a bunch of projects they're doing at one time. And when the way Tyler writes, he likes to keep his artists working, yeah. you know? So for example, if, when we film, we film quick, we film 25 episodes, season one in 10 days. Mm. which is unheard of. Like no one does that in TV. Typically, if you're going to do 10 episodes, it'll take you 10 weeks. That's typically how it works. But we did 25 episodes in 10 days. So it gives us an opportunity as the artist to make money and continue to do other projects. But Tyler works with people that he trusts because that pace is very, very quick. It's, it's 
faster than any pace on television is faster than soap operas. So he likes to work with the people that he know can come in and perform on a day and, and get things done. So if he sees you in one show and he wants to do another show and you've worked well with him, he's going to put you in that show. And that's just the way the way it works there because he's the executive producer, showrunner, writer, director. He gets to do it all. So Yeah. And he's been doing that since the, since the plays because I remember yeah. uh, Cora and Mr. Brown being in, in almost every Tom yeah. Perry, all of the Medea yeah. plays. And then now he doesn't he done transition. Um, I you know, one thing I, I, I love about Tyler Perry is that he's giving a lot of our people opportunities that yes. normally they don't get. So every time I see yes. another show come on on BT, I'm just like, yes. Like I don't care what yes. it is, I'm supporting, I'm gonna watch because I like seeing people that look like me on TV when I turn on on the screen. No, absolutely. Um the representation matters. And um it's it's important that we get an opportunity to see ourselves in a different light. Uh, part of the reason why I started social media uh, five years ago, I think it was five years, was because I had already done network television a couple of times. I did The Blacklist. I did Mysteries of Laura. Um, I did Power. Um, I did I think I did Blue Bloods and another show. And all of the shows, I either played an ex-con, a convict or an inmate. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was on Power for season two, my son was watching it with me. Of course, he wasn't watching the show, but he wanted to see his dad. And it got to the point where I was in jail. And he goes, dang, daddy, you always have on that orange jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, I was like, you know, I'm perpetuating the same stereotype that I hate seeing just to have a job. And I, it, it struck me. Like, I was like, you know, dang, like that hurt. But I was like, what else am I supposed to do? You know, I um, I can only go out for the You can only take what's been offered to you. Yeah, I can only take what's being offered to me. And, and. Two days later, I went out for another role on Blue Bloods and I get there and it was for inmate. And when I get there, there's three auditions. They're doing inmate well, four auditions, inmate number one, inmate number two, a doctor role and an attorney. Okay. All of the inmate roles were black and Latino men. All of the doctor and lawyer roles were Asian and white men. And I left. I walked out of the audition and my wife said, what happened? I was fast. It must have went well. I said, I can't do it. I just I can't I can't do it anymore. She said, what do you mean? I was like, the only way I get to be on television is if I play an inmate or a convict or an ex-con. Yeah. And she was just like, well, what's your plan? I said, I'm going to utilize social media to show a different version of blackness. Like, I, I got 15 seconds. I'm going to create a social sitcom. I started it with my family. And um, representation really matters. Because now when you look at a show like Tyler Perry, you have four black female leads. One is an attorney. Yes. One is a, an entrepreneur, she's a hairdresser, one works at the airport and one works at a bank. You know, these are four black women that have four different jobs that we all do on a daily basis, but they don't yeah. see us like that. So it's important for, for them to see those opportunities. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Four Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real